What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and in this video I'm going to show you how to do 1vx like an absolute demigod. Let's get into it. Welcome back guys and before we hop into the meat and potatoes of today's video a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members the support you guys provide is absolutely amazing I thank you thank you very much and if you want to help support the channel more on that uh, at the end of the video. Okay guys, so a little bit of info what this series is about. Now I do have four or five videos prior to this, but they're all like different titles, different genres. So this is going to be outnumbered for dummies. So this is kind of a knockoff of what Cypher PK used to do way back in the glory days of ESO. If you guys are unfamiliar who Cypher PK is, he kind of got his start on ESO. And if you kind of go check out his channel now, he's got millions of subscribers. He went on to Fortnite, became an absolute monster success. You know, kudos to him and pass on the back. But he did kind of start on ESO and one, what he was famous for is uh, actually taught me a lot when I first started playing ESO is his famous PvP educational commentaries. So this is me kind of picking up that torch because quite frankly guys, if you look on ESO, there are, aren't are any tutorials that kind of teaches you like how to PvP, what you should be looking for, like frame by frame, hey this is what I'm doing. There, there, there's no thought process there. The only thing you can really find online are builds, exposure videos, drama, patch notes, news, Twitter, that's uh, all, all about, yeah, some of that's cool, you know, build videos are cool, you know, uh, some gameplay here and there, that's cool, but no one really breaks down PvP and kind of what's going on, and believe it or not, there's actually so many mechanics that you could possibly cover. I could turn it a five minute 1vx into a 45 minute educational commentary if i really want to break it down that much but i'm not going to in this video we're going i have two clips for you guys and i want to kind of give you all you know, what's going through my head things i'm looking for uh, my sets yada yada rotations so let's do it okay so some things to note before we begin just to kind of give you guys an idea i want to be i'm on the magic of dragonite now there's a couple of sets we're running we're running iron blood and we're running burning spell weave magna incarnate and markian ring of majesty if you guys do not know what any of that is it should be up on the screen somewhere for easy reference so you don't have to go through and google and come back to this video and it's really confusing um the, the first thing i want to point out in this is i want you guys to look at my ui okay i cannot tell you how many people especially on pc with all the add-ons how much garbage is on the screen at any given time. I absolutely hate it. The only add-on I'm using is Buff Timers 2. If you guys have not downloaded it or you need me to do a tutorial on how to set up your bars, you can see right here that I have all my buffs. They have like a really nice gradient from, from red to green, you know, when to apply certain buffs. And over here I have my proc sets, you know, for my actual sets. This is just like a, a logic thing for me, right? And notice the only buffs, debuffs I have on my bar down here are just negative effects. You do not need a whole string of like 30 effects on, on, on your UI, okay? It blows your mind. There's no way your brain can physically process all that and you spend all your time trying to look over here in the corners to see where all the buffs and debuffs are. So rule number one, guys, have a clean UI. And the less garbage on your screen, the better because your mind can actually process the important data what's going on, okay? Okay, to start off, guys, so I've already fished my way over here. I, I brought some players, so there is a huge desert going on in Elysium Bridge right now, which is like the ultimate 1VX spot where it used to be back in the day. So this is called fishing. What you want to do is get near Zerg, bait a few people over, something that's that's palatable, something that's tolerable to you, and what you think you can stand is kind of bait them and alienate them you know, from the group. So what I'm doing here, this is just, just basic, you know, baiting people in, um, buff, debuff management. I'm not trying to burst anyone. Um, I'm going behind trees. So right now I'm putting down Ash Cloud. So Ash Cloud is a AOE heal, kind of, uh, it actually goes through uh, this tree here. So let's say for example, if we go back uh, just a little bit here at the frame, if I toss down, uh, right here, my uh, my Ash Cloud. Even though I tossed it on this side right here, I can actually get the heal over here. Even though I'm kind of line of siding the heal, it really doesn't matter. The ground effects kind of pierce your line of sight, so that's a really good tip for you guys to know. Um, just kind of pay attention to my debuff bar. I two DKs on me. I know that because of all the debuffs. Um, this buff right here is Iron Blood, so I know when Iron Blood is up. If you guys don't know what it is, Iron Blood gives you 30% damage mitigation when it procs, but it slows you. Well, who cares because you can row dodge and b-hop, which I will discuss later on in the video to kind of avoid that snare, right? So what I like to do is using Iron Blood. Now this will be nerfed next patch, so uh, we won't be crutching on this any longer. Don't worry, I have an amendment for that coming up in a Lost Steps PvP build. Please enable the bell icon, like, and sub. 
if you want to see that firsthand and really get the OP builds, you know, kind of going forward uh, before anyone else does. So when I blood procs, that's why I like to go offensive. And that's kind of what I do here. Um, this indicator right here, go big dig. This is also buff, buff timers too, right? Um, this is indicative of burning spell weave. Burning spell weave gives you like 500 spell and weapon damage. So when I see this indicator pop up, I know it's time to go offensive. And that's exactly what I do. Um, I, I pick out the lowest target really in the group. Um, typically on the DK, if you're running Molten Whip, if anyone is around the 15k health threshold, you can typically kill them um, with a leap or a molten whip whether they block it or not to so say uh, 25k health you're going to leap for like 9k you're going to use molten whip for like 9k and then you usually get a lie attack off in a flames of oblivion kind of proc as well so i um, mean it's very important for you to just like isolate uh, the weaklings there so to speak i hate to be derogatory but uh, right here i try to get cute and do a, a 360 whip but uh so i'm gonna like this play out in the background kind of talk to you guys for a second i mean this is nothing this is building up to 1vx itself right so um, what kind of led to this uh, to begin with is me recording, you know, just, just just stupid stuff, right? So I was able to bring these players over from this group that you guys are about to see over here in the corner And that's exactly what I'm going to do again. I'm gonna go up. I want to poke the beehive um, A little bit more about the build I am running engulfing flames burning embers gives you a pretty nice heal Fossilize is a mistake. You want to be running shattering rocks if you're going to run DK in open world Unless you're running talons and power lash, okay? If you're running the talons and power lash the ones that actually heal you instead of molten whip then yes, you'll absolutely want to run Fossilize because it gives you an additional route after the CC. So you can proc your off-balance status effect, which gives you access to Power Lash. A little bit advanced stuff if you guys are unfamiliar with the DK. So right here, um, let me explain what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm actually block canceling, uh, block casting. I'm also roll dodging a lot. The reason I'm doing this is because uh, moments prior to this, right? Someone's trying to chain me. So right here, you see this chain? If you get pulled back into a Zerg, I mean, you you are dead. So a lot of DKs do this. They'll use changes to kind of pull you into a Zerg, you know, typical Zergling mentality. So you can, you have to block this and you have to roll dodge it. If you get repositioned into the Zerg, you're, you're just screwed. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. Just make sure I can break line of sight to make sure he can't spam chain. See, he spammed it again there. I'm holding block this entire time to make sure I get around the corner. And I want to show you a prime example of what happens when you don't hold block right there. So the other DK <laughs> kind of got baited into... Uh, and look, he gets pulled into the Zerg. Now it's completely repositioned. So really pay attention to uh, your your surroundings and what abilities are being fired on you. I barely saw that that, that chain animation. And had I got pulled into this, I, I'd probably been dead, right? So I'm trying to help my DK uh, brethren here. Now this is a very interesting 1BX you guys are about to see. This is probably the most textbook uh, that you can po possibly have. Because you, as a 1BXer, everything changes. You're playing against actual players. This isn't a PvP, uh, PvE environment. You're not playing against bots. You're not playing against the computer. Uh, right here, I actually got Jude. And uh, when I tried to leap, I'm going to go ahead and play this in slow motion. This is just something you have to deal with, guys. I mean, this this is what it is. I try to go to leap this player. Look, I'm, I'm clearly looking at this guy right here. And for whatever reason, my my dude just, just just wants to leap to this this matriarch i i don't know this <laughs> this is just something you have to deal with but the idea was that this guy was supposedly the squishiest um at, at least um, at first glance and that's who i was going to target so how did i land that leap i would probably got it okay right here shit hits the fan all right um my iron blood is not up my burning spell weave is not up what i'm doing right now i'm roll dodging and bee hopping okay so Kind of go back. If you guys have not watched my advanced movement mechanics video, please go back and watch that. It will explain this much, much more in depth. So what this allows me to do, it allows me to not only cancel some of my animations and get uh, more global cooldowns off, but also allows me to be hop, which is bunny hopping. I can maintain my momentum after the jump, even if Iron Blood procs. So let's say, for example, if Iron Blood was to proc sooner, if I'm able to roll dodge and be hop successfully, it's as if I'm never slowed. So that allows me to cover more... Uh, distance just to get uh, to better line of sight. So right now I know people are hitting me with flame lash. Flame lash is a knockback, knockup ability, soft CC, and this is the last thing I want to happen is go down to the slaughter fish. So what I'm doing, I'm uh, actually <laughs> okay. So I don't think he was expecting that. So some sometimes it'd be like that. So I did get flame reach right there, and unfortunately uh, I'm stuck. I know right here that this is just me knowing the terrain. This is me playing the game, having game knowledge, game sense of what's going on, okay? I know this particular area, there is no way out. The only way out of this is gap closing or just sacrificing yourself to the slaughter fish, which I have done many times. So, 
Luckily, on the DK, you have a leap, which is also a gap closer. So what I'm doing here, I'm trying to get all my resources back, and I'm trying to do anything offensive. I'm just prepping up my Seething Fury stacks, you can see right here by this counter. You now I have all my buffs active, I'm burning spell with Iron Blood. I'm holding block, I'm trying to dodge this Flame Reach, because I know if I get Flame Reach one more time, I'm going to the fishies, I'm going to be dead. So I get to my ultimate, and I, I don't waste a second, I try to leap up here, and I get Jude, and yeah, it... I'm actually barely able to get up here. I wasn't able to burst anyone. That's okay. So I'm dropping down Ash Cloud to get a little bit of healing over time. Ash Cloud on this build costs absolutely nothing. If you're, if you guys want to see the build, this is uh, my last two bar build. I can put a link to it in the uh, video description. Again, me screwing up. My bad. I actually got Flame Reach yet again, even though I, I, I thought I was a little bit further from the edge. Again, guys, pay attention to your positioning. I know from personal experience that. I can get around this. So that's exactly what I do. I know, like, hey, as long as I'm on this rock, I can get around. Uh, and that's what I'm doing. I'm just chilling, right? But people be thirsty and they will chase you to kingdom come, okay? Flame reach again. So I'm positioning myself to where if he does flame lash me one more time, it's not going to push me even closer to the water. So I'm, I'm trying to position myself to where that does not happen, okay? So I'm just buff, debuff management, paying attention to you know, my health, obviously. I'm trying to get a quick burst here because I have times three seed and fury stacks. I also have bring spell weave up right here. I make a mistake. I should not be on that side because I know this dude's gonna flame lash me. Um, I try to leap. Luckily, this sword does get off his wars. There's really nothing I can do there. I try to get bomb. So right now, again, I'm just trying to buff, debuff. Iron blood is up. So I'm just trying to line of sight above me as much as physically possible. Um, right here, I kind of realized, like, hey, I'm not going to be able to do anything, so it's time to reposition, uh, which is perfectly fine. So we have uh, three, maybe four people on us at any given time. And again, pay attention to where I'm at. This is a very extremely hard spot to actually hit me if you're above me. So if you want to engage on me, you're going to have to give up your high ground position and, and hop down, which is not very advantageous for you. So that's kind of what I'm doing here, kind of hugging the rock. Um, so I see another player, uh, the, the the jig is up, now I need to reposition to where I can line a sight even better, that rock is no good for me, and that's exactly what I'm doing, I'm dropping down my Ash Cloud, as you guys know from before, Ash Cloud is going to heal me on the other side of the tree as well, just keep that in mind. Uh, really nothing going on here, uh, right here um, is what you want to use to your advantage, when you take a CC like this, you want to use that to your advantage, now I cannot be CC for the next like 5 or 6 seconds, so I can go on the offensive, I know it's burning Spoey is proc, I see someone half health, I leap, and uh, quite frankly guys, I don't know what happened to that player, um, maybe he died, I actually don't really know how he got in the rocks over here, um, yeah, I, I don't know how that happened, but he ends up dying, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so right now, just buff, debuff. I'm going to another tree. Iron Blood is proc. Typically, you, you want to keep all your buffs up. As soon as you start laying your, your, your buffs fall off, you're screwed. I'm prepping out Seething Fury stacks. I know this player's at half health. He's exactly who I'm going to focus. I did get cc by the sword. I should have block casted there. So I'm just going to go back. Um, if you want to, for sure, land your, uh, your whips. Um, you always want to fossilize before you go into, I actually think I, I sped it up uh, by some freak of nature way. So I noticed I did fossilize uh, beforehand just so that I, it's guaranteed to land the mole whip. Yes, if this was a better player, he'd be able to break freak roll dodge, but he's out stamina for whatever reason and uh, he didn't try to get bombed one more time. Um, again, pay attention to all the buffs on your bar. Um, Especially right here, this icon right here is Draugrkin. So essentially, um, I know this sword is going to be putting out massive damage because Draugrkin increases all the dot damage that pretty much dealt to you. So I have to be really careful of that or, or any damage instance whatsoever. So you see all the poison and stuff on my buff bar, playing break, engulfing flame, moving Emma's Claw, all that. So right now, I am applying Burning Embers. Again, guys, sorry if I'm speaking too fast for you. Um, this is going to be a lot longer video than what I thought. There's actually a lot more uh, I need to be breaking down, but I really don't have time for it. I want to keep this, you know, sub 15, 20 minutes if at all possible, because I do have another 1VX to go over. I uh, may not make it into this video, this may be too long. So I do apply Burning Embers to everyone. The reason you want to do that, not only does it deal um, pretty, really good dot damage, but it also heals you over time. And right, th that leap right there was just a resource management on the DK. You have a battle roar passive, so every time you use your ultimate, you get resources back. I realize I can't burst anyone. My ultimate is down. I have to line a sight, so I'm backtracking yet again to this tree. I wish I had a better tree. So what I'm doing right here, what's going through my head, I'm trying to figure out, okay, who am I going to focus? Uh, crazy Capo here, let his bus fall off, fossilizing the whip. He's gone. 
So now things are looking more palatable. I can be a lot more aggressive since there's only two people on me. I know the Sork is doing mad damage. I know step 9372 over here may not be doing so much. So I'm just trying to get my resources back just to make sure when I commit, I'm not going to run out of resources once I commit. Again, Burning Embers is trying to soften up the Sork. I see step over here. His buffs aren't up. I immediately, as soon as I get my Seething Fury, uh, I whip. And then Juve, this sort right here is, um, I don't know if this is lag or maybe he's just out of stamina. He, he does really good by roll dodging every single whip. I think whip should be a cleave effect. So right here is really important for you to know when to pressure your opponent when to buff up. Sorks, typically, um, if, if they're in like a 1v1 build, I assume he was in a 1v1 build because he was running Draugurkin. All right, so right here when a Sork is low health, typically they won't have a direct heal. Um, I, well, I say typically, I say probably 50% of Sorks won't have a direct heal unless they're running like a pet or some, some Zerg build, right? If you're a solo Sork and you're pretty average, you know, I mean, pretty decently average, you're not going to have like a self heal. So instead of buffing up right here, um, I'm just going to go in for the kill and pressure the opponent. When, whenever you see a Sork low health, you need to pressure them. Like, they're going to pop a shield, they're going to you know, do their thing. Don't let them have that luxury. Um, Sorks have very bad resource management, so if you're able to pressure them and keep them on the back bar, then they're just just crap out of luck. So we're back in the beginning, kind of recap of what's going on here at the beginning of the clip. We're doing fishing, just kind of bringing people from the Zerg, um, getting a little bit further into the clip. Um, it's important for you to just, just know your terrain. This is part of just being a veteran ESO player. Like, I know I'm screwed here. The only way for me to get out of this is to leap and gap close. So this is where you just have to be resourceful and just, just kind of think on the fly and make things up as you go. Later on, we're going to go to um, where I actually was able to get yeah, a turnaround. So what you're really fishing for is that one initial kill. If you're able to tank all these players and you're able to get that one initial kill, it doesn't matter if uh, they're, they're the one doing like 2k damage a second or 1k damage a second. That's something that you do not have to mitigate. So any opportunity you get to delete someone, just delete them. That's going to make your life so, so much easier. So target the squishy, there you go. And then that really opened up the 1bx to where now I can manage these three players if I really wanted to out in the open. Fast forward to the end, target prioritization. Just know that when you see a source of low health, kind of rule of thumb, just pressure the crap out of them, man, and uh, you should be good to go. So moving on to the next clip. Okay, guys, so going into the next clip, this one's gonna be a short one, but this one's all about being proactive, not reactive, okay? So let's go ahead and play out the clip. Um, kind of what you wanna do when you want 1vx, and you always wanna try to get continuous attack because that is a huge sustain and damage buff. So. Right now, I'm just kind of doing, you know, typical DK things. Um, I'm actually not sure why I wasn't able to hit that Nightblade with the leap. I, I don't really understand. So right now, I'm just kind of targeting the squishies, you know, as per usual. What, okay, so this, let me, let, me, let me go back here. So this buff right here, guys, you need to pay very close attention, again, to your, your debuff bar. Um, notice that down here at the bottom that I have clean UI yet again. Okay, the only things I have right here in this area are my debuffs and it's very important for you to kind of isolate certain debuffs like power of light for example um, this will tell you when the burst is coming so power of light if you're not uh, familiar with what it does essentially uh, during a, uh, a time frame you take X amount of damage and it actually amplifies that damage so the more damage you do during that time frame the harder that power of light is going to hit so you know when this is about to proc the burst is going to come so you need to just keep that in mind um, just it'll kind of give you like an idea of like when the burst is coming when to prepare so we're able to get a kill i'm no longer comfortable with tanking everyone here on the point notice we have poisons on soul trap lots of dots got here with an end cap so right here um is actually a resource leap this has nothing to do with bursting or anything like that again we're using the, the battle war passive we're line siding behind this big pillar here um actually a heavy attack the scamp just get a little bit of resources back so this is what I mean by being proactive, not reactive. So I'm going to the top here and I know that I have a very small burst window if anyone wants to kind of peek their head up. I actually have a small burst window to kill them because they're going to be isolated from their healer. They're going to be line siding, you know, from the teammates or whatever. And I can get my prep work going. Notice that I have my Seething Fury stacks. I always try to have three at any given time because quite frankly, you just never know when the burst is going to be available. So you gotta be prepared. So notice I get to the top of the steps. I'm already tossing down Ash Cloud for a hill. I have my Seething Fury stacks proc. Someone runs up because they are comfortable that they're with, you know, five, six other people. They think that and nothing's going to happen. Well, uh, they're wrong. So we were able to get a quick kill right here. And like what I said earlier, guys, once you get that first initial kill, not only is that a huge ego boost, 
you know, mentally, but it actually, you know, just mathematically just, you know, makes everything better for you. It's a huge morale boost when you finally get that kill. And you always have to recenter yourself. Do not get greedy. I mean, right here, um, I'm, I really sense no threats, but when you get a kill, just make sure all your I's are crossed, all your T's are dotted. You know, actually strike that, reverse it. But uh, you guys get what I'm saying. So, Again, laying the Ash Cloud right here, I'm heavy attacking the Scamp. The reason I'm actually heavy attacking the Scamp here is because if I was to heavy attack Resto, one of the players, you can actually block that and it will diminish the amount of resources that you gain. Whereas if I put this on a pet, you know, heavy attack a pet, they, they can't block. So I'm going to get my full resources back, you know, no matter what. I notice I'm putting burning embers on everything. Even on this pet, I'm putting burning embers on because it's going to heal me. I turn over here to the, uh, I think it's the Templar, I'm not really sure. I put Burning Embers on them because this one give me a heal as well, okay? So just kind of rule of thumb on the DK. You got several people on you, light everyone up with Burning Embers, okay? Um, I see the Black Stars at uh, I mean, a level 14. I mean, of course, I'm going to you know, just delete him. Uh, go on Juju, he's, you know, 500 CP. Um, th that's kind of one thing you want to kind of keep track of, too. Uh, usually, lower CP players are more inexperienced, so you want to kind of target them first. So, um, right here is a very small niche play, so I actually got really aggravated, and I missed, like, so many attacks because uh, this player was actually roll dodging. So, instead of uh, running the risk of using another whip or a light attack or something like that, to uh, execute him here, I actually opt for using Engulfing Flames. Uh, Engulfing Flames is a cone effect, so even if he does roll dodge, it's only hit him anyway. So I actually use it as an execute there. So what would have happened if he was to roll dodge a uh, lie attack and he gets a 15k breath of life heal, now he's back up to full and now I miss out on this kill. So in situations like that, you just gotta kind of like, you know, think on the fly, you know? Uh, right now I'm just uh, applying my heals, putting down, you know, the uh, you know prep work um guy jumps off like a super thirsty of course uh, this is an absolute no no i should never done this and i jump down and you know I, I get the kill that's cool so now i'm screwed now i have no line of sight i have to roll dodge two or three times um it, it's actually a really good habit to get into of knowing your limitations so i know from this distance right here okay to this distance over here you know to the right that that requires like two to three roll dodges to get behind line of sight so you want to take a look at your stamina bar and be like okay if i'm caught here do i have enough stamina to where i can roll dodge two or three times to get up here if the answer is no you know heavy attack with your dual wield you know whatever get resources back so always keep track of where your stamina pools are your match pools and just know the limitations like what it's going to take I'm going to have to spend like 11,000 stamina in order to get this stair staircase over here. I have 18k, so that gives me a break for you to play with, which is like 3,000. So that's like 14,000 of my 18,000 stamina pool to get from here to here guaranteed. Am I doing all this math in my head as I'm doing this 1vx? Uh, no, it's, it's just kind of a gut feeling. I know it's going to take like two thirds of my stamina bar to get up here safely. Um, so. As much as I would like to say I cleaned these guys up and absolutely destroyed them, we eat three dragon leaves, and this is what I meant at the beginning of the video of running very overpowered sets. When you are 1BXing, you have to run the best of the best to increase your odds. Um, everyone else is going to be running really, really good sets as well, so you have to fight fire with fire. You have to be the cheese lord. You have to be the toxic scum lord of the game if you are 1VXing. So notice Iron Blood is proc'd here. I would not have been able to tank all of this if Iron Blood has not been proc'd. So during that one proc of Iron Blood, I ate three leaps and an end cap. And my health did not budge. Okay, just, just keep that in mind. Um, this is why Iron Blood is getting nerfed this patch. And Gilliam, I hate you. Every single time I see you in Battlegrounds, I will teabag your ass. I'm coming for you. <laughs> anyway, so um, really nothing to, to note here. I know I'm screwed. Iron Blood drops off. I actually eat a, a, a 15k heavy attack. Um, there's just way too many people that you know we can't deal with. Had of, we not jumped off and got really thirsty for that kill, maybe we could have turned this into a, a potential you know better 1bx, but uh, that's not the case. And um, I definitely will show you guys what I do right and yeah, mostly what I do wrong so you don't make my mistakes, okay? Okay guys, so that about does it for the educational PvP commentary. If you found anything at all in this video helpful, I would like to know down in the comments. If there is absolutely anything that I can improve on, please also let me know. I want this to be a better, better series. I want to have 
newer ESO players, average player, PvE players, I don't care. I want to pull as many people into PvP as I can, and I want you guys to feel as comfortable as physically possible, okay? Do not be afraid to reach out in Discord. I get off work at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, so if you have any questions, more than likely I'll be able to reply to you. And if you want to kind of expedite your learning process, if you want some one-on-one -on -one PvP coaching, um, I have Patreon for that. You guys hit me up. You have pretty much unlimited times, like per week, just whenever I'm free and you're free. I mean, we'll figure out something out. We'll figure something out. And we also have YouTube memberships that kind of do the same thing. And YouTube memberships is really cool because you get access to uh, emojis that you can spam and chat. You guys get shout outs in all my videos and you know all that cool stuff. So if you're interested in any of that, the links are down in the description below. Anyways, with all that being said, guys, I suck at outros, so uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna peace out. Good night, peace. 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 No, no. Bye.